So coronary artery disease is really the most common form of heart disease. And in fact, it is the number one killer of Canadians. Uh, so it's an important disease and it really is characterized by the buildup of plaque inside the blood vessels that are on the surface of your heart. And that leads to things like angina and eventually heart attack uh, from a public point of view is something very important. So there are no known cause per se for coronary artery disease. What we've come to understand is that coronary disease is associated with risk factors. And those risk factors are common things. There are family history, so that means your genes you're born with, but there are also many things that are modifiable, meaning that we can tackle, such as smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, poor activity or low activity level, diet, high cholesterol, even air pollution and stress. The signs and symptoms of coronary artery disease can be very variable, and that's one of the problems that sometimes makes it very hard to diagnose. Some patients may have no symptoms at all and have terrible disease, while others will have a lot of symptoms and don't have much disease. But classically speaking, we think of pain or pressure in the chest, but it can also be in the jaw, in the teeth, in the neck, or arm, or both arms, and even the back in the neck. So those would be the more classic forms of, of symptoms that we would expect. So how do we find out if we have coronary disease is essentially, it, it's, it often cannot be found by just visiting your doctor uh, or a simple blood test. It really requires an assessment of the patient and the kind of assessment you're looking for is first, you need to demonstrate the symptoms of the patient with activity. That would be the most common way we would try to diagnose that. So an exercise stress test on a treadmill, for example, or a stress echo. So we would make the patient walk on a treadmill and we would be able to show and demonstrate changes on a cardiogram, for example, at the same time as the patient experiences his symptoms. But ultimately, the, really the only way to diagnose for sure is with imaging of the actual vessels. So you need to show the blockages and the way to show the vessels are really by two ways. One would be with a CT scan, which is a, not a very specific way of looking at it, but a very global way, but it's easy to get access to that. But the more specific way would be a cardiac catheterization or a dye test or an, a coronary angiogram. Those are the means the same thing. They just mean taking pictures of the blood vessels around your heart and demonstrating the blockages. Yeah, so how do we treat coronary artery disease? I think the first part is really around education, as we are doing today, is what are the risk factors? If we can tackle these risk factors, that is the primary place that we can, we can tackle the disease. Secondly, is really around medical therapy. Medicines and drugs that help coronary disease is really the mainstay of treatment before we go to interventions. And the three things we focus on when we think about medical treatment is first controlling the risk factors like blood pressure for example we would want to control that then we would want to control things that lead to plaque buildup so lowering the cholesterol for example and lastly you would want to find ways to reduce the work your heart has to do because by doing so you're less likely to have symptoms and finally if all of those things don't work and you still have symptoms and not feeling well or we think that there's a reason that you would live longer if we fix those blood vessels, then we go towards an intervention. And the two types of interventions that we have are either through a catheter that go inside the blood vessel to put a stent in or heart surgery. And there are, it's not really one competing with the other, they're complementary. There are some patients that are better treated with one versus the other. Yeah, so how do we prevent coronary artery disease? Fundamentally, it's about tackling the risk factors first. So the sooner the younger people are educated around the risk factors, the more likely they are to eat well, be active, take care of themselves and watch some of the risk factors to be able to tackle them. That is really the only way at the moment to prevent heart disease. Now, the second part to that is if heart disease manifests itself, is that it's never too late to start treatment and to start making the changes that you need to, because that really ultimately will be the best way to predict long-term life. So what is the future for coronary artery disease in general from a medical point of view is we've made tremendous progress over the years in 
the medicines, the medication, understanding the risk factors, and some of the treatment we offer. So now we are offering more and more options for patients as they develop coronary artery disease. It's very rare now that we think that there are no options for patients. So there is hope at the end of all of this, that the medicines and the treatment we have help patients live longer and have more productive lives.